Welcome back to the Mob Mentality Show. My name is Austin Chadwick. This is Chris Lucian. And today we're very excited to have uh, Johan, Simon, and Martin with us um, from the Remote Mob Programming Community and uh, all the way from uh, Europe. So uh, <laughs> got different time zones going, kind of a, a meta thing going on right now. Uh, we're going to be talking about mob programming and we're kind of mob, you know, remote show Ian, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I probably should have been remote too. I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, we got three topics. Um, and I guess we'll start with the one that kind of will lead into them all. Um, and But I guess before we get to topics, let's, uh, let's get, do some short introductions. Yeah. So, uh, do you guys mind introducing yourselves? Maybe starting with. Starting with Johan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we said. No. Yeah, sure. So, my name is Jochen. I um, yeah, live in Germany as all the others, and I'm working for an IT consultancy called InnoQ, um, based in Germany and Switzerland. And we do help customers to um, write and deliver great software. Awesome. Okay. So, I hand over to Simon. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Simon, and um, I'm, I'm living also in Germany, and I'm living in a very remote location. So, uh, train stations are very far away, I have to use the car for everything. And um, yeah, I'm living here in a, in a, in a small village uh, with my wife and our little daughter. Uh, I was just uh, two years old now. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's great to, to be able to live here in this remote location and still work for a consultancy company where you normally expect to travel a lot to the customers on site, but it's kind of what we are why, why we are talking <laughs> today. That it's not necessary. Awesome. Handing over to Martin. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. My name is Martin, and as the other three, I live in Germany. I'm a uh, yeah a senior consultant as the other three, as the other two are, and. Uh, working quite a time now with the InnoQ company. And well, yes, I've seen some projects now and uh, none, of, none of them is like this one because we've most, most of the time we work at the, uh, the, company, at the customer side or uh, remotely, but not together like this. So this is somewhat of a unique situation that we that create that we created here, or that that's come to to live, and uh, that's what we want to talk about a bit. Uh, that's very cool. I noticed already uh, something really interesting, and that was that you you kind of to me felt very fluid, and uh, you self organized around this notion of uh, handing off to the next person and ch and announcing who's going to be speaking. Um, and so, uh, I guess, you know, this is, this is a little bit jumping the gun a little, but did that, would you say that behavior emerged from your being remote and mobbing? Yeah, probably a bit. Um, <laughs> you, when you, uh, we use, um, the alphabetic name orders to hand over to the next person. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Fast. So you, you, yeah, you even have heuristics. Because he has a C. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And you can tell someone who's not used to remote communication or mobbing, I didn't know how to hand it off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that, was, that was a really, um, like I just immediately picked up on that. It was just something that was uh, really interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, I wanted to talk, you know, a little bit about, um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, have issues about um, isolation when remoting and then remote programming and things along those lines. And I think that was one of the first topics that you wanted to talk about. And so um, I think the first thing that we want to get going on is this concept of uh, the feeling of isolation when being remote. And then, uh, and then maybe we can segue off and in, uh, back into that conversation in a little bit. So, um, what have your uh, experiences been with remoting, and um, how have your lives tied into it? Things along those lines. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe we can do the same the same order. Maybe we start with Johan and go down the list if we like. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, <clears throat> um, pretty interesting. Um, as I'm a consultant for over 12 years now, I always didn't like 
remote teams, to be honest, for the very first times, because whenever someone was working from home or from remote, like nearshoring or offshoring from India, um, I never had the feeling that the team was working as a team, right? Um, there were the um, persons on site and there were the others, but it was never a team. So I was kind of skeptical in, in starting a fully remote project. Uh, well, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy to f that we found a solution that works for us to actually work together as a team while doing software. So that really looks great. Yeah, so the, the, the feeling of isolation was, was prom prominent through your career because of remoting. Um, anybody else have anything to add to that? Is that... Yeah, maybe, maybe um, from my part, um, before, I, I'm, not, I'm not really that uh, uh, long in consultancy. Um, I, I was doing my PhD at university for six to seven years. And we had a very, like it was on site and uh, like we had a lot of great uh, talks during coffee hour um, or during, run, during lunch. And I really enjoyed that. And, and this was like working together with friends uh, the whole week. And, and this is was what I really enjoyed so much. I didn't want to lose that. And then my, my situation changed. My wife got a great job offer in a very lo remote location. And I said, okay. Um, and then I, and I was done with my PhD and I looked for a job and I, I tried to find an, a solution <laughs> to that. Because I wanted to, to move with her and with our child. Yeah. Um, but still, I really had a fear of, of twi when switching to remote work. I would, I would miss this like, a social part so much that it, that it wouldn't work out for me. That I had to come up with a real different solution instead of just just working home all day. Mm. And I really had the fear of of social isolation, the fear of um, that I, yeah, that I didn't like working at home anymore. That, yeah kind of my, my, my situation. Got it. Anything else on that topic? Martin? <laughs> yes. Um, I waited for him to do the mob next. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we hand over. Um, yeah, in my history is a little bit different. Well, um, I was doing a, a project all alone for the last three years, actually, all alone, really, and from remote, because my company is, uh, our company is uh, located about 400 kilometers from here, so you don't go there <laughs> all the day, so you stay at home. And uh, the customer, it was the internal project for, 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 for ourselves. And I was really, I had some, some sort of customers where our own colleagues, but you don't have, didn't have to do with them. You don't have to do with them all the time. So I was. There were weeks where, where I hadn't any contact with anybody mm. uh, all week long. So this <laughs> was. Uh, I'm going from the from the one extreme to the other now because we're together all the time. So this is really <laughs> from from ice cold to the bloodiest hell. <laughs> uh, is it um... the way around? I want. To, I don't want to touch. Is it exhausting? And, uh, sorry? Is it exhausting to be mobbing after being remote for so long? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Both is exhausting yeah. you know, in a way. You get you get that feeling of being alone. Mm. It's not it's not a very nice feeling or being or being doing f your thing f for yourself all the time is not it's also not nice. The other one is uh, being together all the time is exhausting in a way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I hear that even from mob programming in person with, uh, with people, yeah. it typically ends up, uh, you have to get used to it after a while for sure. Yes. Yes. Well, we're used to it now because we yeah. do it for over a year now. Nice. Fantastic. Very good. But, but it's still exhausting. It's, uh, yeah. you can, yeah, it's it's, but it's in a way worth the the effort. Yeah, yeah, and so that's... the project and the the thing that we are we are, uh, we are, we are creating mm -hmm. with that with that kind of method uh, uh, project setup, we are creating a lot of good stuff, and 
that's not not nothing you, uh, you would do if you would to split up all the time and uh, yeah sure. definitely yeah and i guess the follow-up question i had and this might be jumping into remote mobbing directly but uh so that is a common uh, problem or concern with uh, remote or non-remote um, is, uh, you know, getting exhausted. How, how do you guys uh, help remedy that problem while you're remote prog programming? Yes. Well, when we started remote mob programming, um, <clears throat> we even missed the breaks. So we were doing three or four hours. Um, <laughs> Uh, in a mob and we didn't have any breaks uh, because it felt so good to to write software and to be productive it's like being a flow right yeah. and um, well after a few days or weeks we realized that it was really necessary to make breaks um, every one or two hour and to force ourselves to, to make breaks and um from that time someone is always there saying okay let's have a 10 minute break or even half an hour break just to raise a okay. yeah. yeah definitely i mean that's we found that essential for in-person mobbing and makes sense that remote mobbing as well do you guys use a tool for that to remind you to take breaks <laughs> no not really. not really ah okay you just, uh, when you feel it, you say it, <laughs> essentially. It's, when you feel you need your coffee, you would just propose it to the other. It's just, let's have a coffee and uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes break. And yeah, nice. Most of the time, everybody's uh, agreeing to that. Um, do, you, uh, do you use any tools to facilitate mobbing? Like, let's go deeper into the, um, you know, so, so you've been primarily mobbing remote, all the time and uh and so um maybe we can contrast experiences uh and so I, I think um maybe you can tell us a little bit about what what you feel is specific to the remote mob programming that's important mm -hmm. um that people have uh, wanted to have sought you out to, to hear about because I, I know that um you maintain a website there's uh recently been a book um so so what are the most important aspects that our our viewers can look to for making remote mob programming work well yeah so i think uh, it's, it starts with a good microphone yeah. <laughs> everything starts with yeah. a great microphone um so i don't i don't wear a headset it's like nobody else here is wearing a headset right now and i think audio is great yeah. and so we we bought uh, a great a microphone it's um i think 100 bucks or so and this really gives you the freedom to be at home, just talking to each other. You have the, you have the camera on all, all day, um, everybody. And even leave it on when we go AFK or to lunch or I don't know. So everybody sees we are, we are not in place. Um, and when we come back, you see, okay, people are joining again. The break is now over. You see people like trickling into the room again, in the meeting room, in our virtual office, basically. So I think that's that's really really helpful. Awesome. Yeah, with um, <clears throat> not wearing a headset and the camera on, it actually feels like sitting next to each other. It doesn't really feel like being remote, mm. but like like working next to each other. Quite funnily, um, we but we recently. Um, got some new team members from our customers in our team and uh, they were located at the customer's office three of them and when we we three were um, away um, they were on their own and finally they continued to use uh, the virtual tools um, instead of um, going to to a meeting room or, or anything because it was much easier for them to, and uh, to 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 work to, together using video conferencing even though they were literally sitting next to each other yeah mm, because they are in a huge uh, plan office 
there's no there's not an, a, a small office they have a real great office where everybody else is sitting from the, the department and they have really trouble of understanding each other and if they have the tools and they have their headsets on there they can understand each other and work, work together better if, yeah. as if they were sitting right next to each other it's a funny thing actually yeah but they don't get any room where, where it would be better for them Mm -hmm. By the way, they have to wear a headset as they're sitting in an open plan space. So it's even more comfortable for us being in the home office. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, fascinating. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess um, just a, my question, one question, you mentioned that to get a good microphone, um, probably a good camera too. What uh, what types of hardware do you use to um, or recommend for people that are trying to do this well? Well, for the microphone, uh, it's basically uh, we use the Blue Yeti microphone. Yeah, and that's what we're we're on right now too. <laughs> <laughs> that's just yeah, and and uh, so a Logitech camera. We we put on the top of our main screens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the the thing is. That, that the camera is basically on eye level. Yeah. And, and when you have just your laptop camera, it's always straight, strange angle mm. coming from, from, from below this, this frog perspective. Uh, it's not a nice, uh, look at if you, if you have to look at it all like eight hours a day. Yeah. But I think what's even more interesting is, is the software because we, we wrote our own like little, little helper. Okay. To handle the handover and um like changing the typist so when basically oh, when I, really? I, I start like coding and i'm being the typist and I, i'm done i just key into the console mob next and then martin is, is next and and the tool basically manages everything else so it, it creates a temporary commit in a temporary branch and manages this and when martin then keys in mob start it takes this temporary commit from this temporary branch and he can just continue where I ended without fascinating any tests or anything. Okay, and so just, and everybody can use it. We, we probably should link it in the show notes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I've already linked it. We have a, a Trello board of resources. Yeah. And I added the link to this tool to your guys' set of links and books. Already. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody is using their own tools then. Or basically their own IDE, their own, but the source code is what's bouncing back and forth between people. We, yeah, we could be, but we, we don't. <laughs> okay, we were, we were talking about uh, the open source tool and, uh, um, or I don't know if it's open source. Is it open source? It's open source. All right, it's open source. Okay. Uh, yeah, and we were just talking about how we can, um, you know, how a person using this tool can start a new session and rotate through and uh, um, essentially the, the source code goes onto a temporary branch and then it gets pulled back and then somebody can work on it. So they could be using their own tools, but everybody uses IntelliJ. Um, and and, and yeah. so, yeah. Because in the, in the mob, you could have help each other out with uh, handling the IDE the, the best way you can do it. So, uh, and the one thing I wanted to add is uh, you, you put in a timer too. If you say mob start, you say, I want to be for 10 minutes. And after the 10 minutes, you get this. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, sorry. Time's up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Time's up. And, uh, yeah. That's, that's a tool that Simon has created. Nice, nice. So, uh, so you define how much time you're going to take on the keyboard it's not the same time for everybody. Yeah, no, you, we, we, you, you define it to be 10 minutes. Okay, but is everybody it? Everybody still did 10 minutes, so. Oh, okay, everybody has 10 minutes. Okay, yeah, yeah it's interesting. We, so we, we, yeah, we do regular reviews if uh, a shorter period to be better, like six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, but we mostly we stay with 10 minutes because now, yeah. Fascinating. Um, it, it works. It works. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll just ask. So, so having done remoting, remote mob programming, um, uh, what are what are the differences that that you felt as far as like maybe productivity goes, or or 
happiness with the quality of the code. How, how have things changed for you since you started mobbing versus just being purely remote? Well, I think the, ma the main benefit in doing software is that you don't really have to wait for anything. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to wait for pull requests or code reviews or yeah. <laughs> being back from the holidays. Um, you're always in the mob and you're always able to decide what to do next and how to proceed. Awesome. And this gives you pretty much the feeling of being in a flow. So you can, most you can write uh, features or stories within one day and mm -hmm. put them into production. So Fantastic. in the past, where, um, we always had to wait for uh, someone to, to acknowledge the pull request and give the commands and re doing the reworks and waiting again to approve the reworks and that is what is really helping to for time to market, right? We're doing software features faster than ever before because we, we aren't blocked by ourselves. Mm. And that's awesome. the main benefit we experienced uh, from from um, mobbing in terms of productivity. It sounds very lean. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, like, it's it's been coming up a lot, code reviews as being a pain mm -hmm. uh, in, in developers I interact with that aren't mobbing. And yeah, from a lean perspective, code reviews have a lot of waste, a lot of yeah. queuing, a lot of waiting. Um, the communication is slower, right? Yeah. When you're face-to-face -face remotely or literally face-to-face, -face, you're able to communicate much faster on, well, I had a concern here on line 15, and you can work it out much faster than you can through a tool typing it back and forth. and. Uh, so I think it makes sense that productivity goes up because there's less, yeah. less waste in the system. Yeah. So, um, so I, I wanted to segue on, on to our next topic. Um, and, uh, and so this was a really interesting, when we asked you for topics, I think this was a really interesting one to me. Mm. Um, and so, uh, that's basically, uh, I mean, maybe you can talk a little bit about the before and after with um, remote mob programming for gaining the trust of management in a remote environment. Um, that, that'd be really interesting to us. Please go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the thing was being remote is um, the manager does not see us working, right? Mm -hmm. It, well, it kind of is, is uh, the fears that I uh, said earlier, that I didn't see the teams working as a team um, together when part of the team is not collocated. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a pretty common concern managers have if some someone is not in front of them seeing that they do, do work. Right, and I think it's a quite natural fear. Um, and um, there is even more fear uh, in a mob, in a remote mob, when the whole team is working on the same issue. Yeah. They're not doing... The fear is that the team is not doing um, effective work. Mm. Is, is it really efficient that everybody is doing the same at the same time, right? That's, that's always the case. And I think that really some, one of the main issues that teams have to solve when they want to work remotely as a team doing remote mob programming is they need to constantly convince that they are doing great software. Mm. And um, we found out that it helps to write down um, what we experience uh, at a day. So what we're doing is we, um, <clears throat> we're writing, um, it's kind of similar as Basecamp uh, calls check-ins. Um, we, we do 
write in a um, chat channel at the end of the day what goes up in our mind and what we learned and what we've done the day. And everybody in the team is doing this uh, check-in message at the end of the day. It's mostly two or three sentences. And uh, management is reading uh, these channels. And they are pretty happy as they pretty much get the feeling of being informed what's going on. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So it's like a little uh, micro status report that um, it's available to uh, the manager or, and they, they feel like they are um, kind of informed of what's going on. Um, have, have, you, uh, have you ever had your, your manager join your remote mob programming session and watch it all or anything along those lines? Has that been a thing? Um, no. <laughs> Uh, has never did that because has never done that because it's more we are more a very self organized team at yeah. the customer place, and uh, but we are external consultants at that customer's place, so we are okay. more expensive than the internal um, developers, and it's also a fear of that they, they don't they want don't they don't want to waste the money or um, want to see results basically what they pay for when yeah. they, they hire us as consultants, so there's. I would say it's even like a third point to, to what Jochen said. Um, this, this this fear of is my money invested wisely and are they are they doing the right things? And a funny thing actually, so we, we don't have any like scheduled really meeting with with our manager. Hmm. Um, it's it's mostly these these check-ins and um, one one time we were our discipline was quite low. So. <laughs> Stopped writing check-ins, um, and well, management said, "Okay, please, please tell us how we can stay informed. <laughs> you no longer write check-ins. Please say us say we do a meeting." And we said, "Oh no, 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 no. We we will we will we will get our discipline in order." <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to have uh, these these um, status meetings. Yeah, we think they are a waste of time. Yes, yes. So you you could write. You write three or four sentences, and that that could prevent you from having to spend an hour uh, in, in a meeting, right? Yes, that's correct. That's <laughs> fascinating. Um, okay, uh, do you have anything more to say on that topic before we move on? Mm -hmm. Maybe the interesting thing about this check-in was that it's really read by a lot of people. Like, and really a lot of the developers at the customer's place read those mm -hmm. and um, a lot of interesting effects trigger when we write something. So when we, when we raise an issue, this issue has no management attention. Yeah. When we, when we uh, do something really cool and interesting and maybe a little bit of innovation that no one has done that at the customers before, it gets attention and maybe other teams will try it out. That's really a great way um, to, to influence pe uh, things and people for the better. Fascinating. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a really good point. Um, and, uh, you know, communication is key. I think that's why we mob program even, right? <laughs> um, and, uh, and, yeah, was, uh, sometimes it has to be like a, a, a drop of information that anybody can receive at any time. Um, and those formats really help, I think, in, in any environment is uh, information radiators in general, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I had one follow-up question to that. And uh, it's interesting, uh, in our the current way we mob is we will mob together in person and then we will push it to production and customers will use it and we'll get feedback that way or we'll demonstrate it to people internally and they'll give us feedback. I was interested in the feedback loop for you guys. So you have these check-ins you do. Um, how do you generally receive feedback on the software you're producing as a remote mob? Yeah, maybe that uh, depends a little bit on the, the kind of software that we develop. We're doing some sort of uh, a message oriented uh, 
architecture that we have, and we are right in the middle of some sort of backbone uh, of all other teams of the, um, because the what, what the customer has is a really nice uh, verticalization of the yeah let's say the customer journey. Mm -hmm. So everybody's split up into uh, teams that are following this customer journey, and we're we're sitting right in the middle of it. <laughs> somewhat and um, we're doing some into as if our project is actually doing communication work no it's more, more more of a back 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 end work so we don't do a lot of U, ui mm -hmm. so what we do and uh, the success that we can show is that it works not some sort of web ui or, or that, that's maybe uh, something you um, depending on the project setup, because the project setup says we don't need to program any UI, we don't show UI, so we just show well the background works, our process tests works, everybody everything's connected the right way, we send the right messages, and everything's fine. So maybe that's a little bit depending on the project that we have, nice. the content, the in, the, yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, I think we're uh, approaching our time box. And so I kind of wanted to uh, ask um, a, a little bit about uh, uh, the website and, and the book and, and just uh, have you talk a little bit about what uh, people might find in, in those uh, media. So basically, we, we are doing remote mock programming for over a year now, as Martin said. And at one point we said, this is so cool. Um, or even when, well, I say, I don't want to work differently anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't only want, want to work that way from now on. And basically we, we decided together to write this up, how we are working, because we think this is really, uh, this is really a great way. And um, well, we started with the homepage and then we said, okay, maybe try to add more, more beef. And then we came up with this this little book here. Nice, fantastic! Congratulations. <laughs> uh, we recommend even the book by Mark Pearl. So, so it's basically the book we started with, yeah. and now we, we wrote our own based on on his terminology. <laughs> um, fantastic. So, yeah, that's kind of basically how how, how it came to be. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, so. Um, check that out uh so the website is remotemobprogramming.org right yeah and um and uh yeah thank you for being on the show and uh dealing with the time zone differences in our <laughs> schedule yeah. and um uh yeah i mean i i want to thank you guys because uh i mean the what i've seen uh on twitter at least in other places is that uh, you're really helping the community you know there are people who are really interested in remote mob programming and you guys are being very helpful so uh just a big thanks for helping the community grow and uh, sharing your experiences. And thanks so much for being on the show. This was a ton of fun. So. Thanks for having us. <laughs> all right. And thanks to all our viewers. Uh, we will see you next time. If you think that somebody could uh, benefit from remote mob programming, share this video with them because I think that that can uh, really get them started. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe and all that. We'll see you all later. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>